so we are calling Dana White right now. Hello. Dana, how are you, man? I'm good, buddy. How are you? Good. So we got Dana White on the podcast, the UFC president. Uh, first of all, thanks for doing my podcast, and thank you for the countless hours of entertainment you have helped provide. I don't even know what my life was pleasure, like. But pleasure. Thanks for having me. Oh, no worries, man. Uh, it's awesome. I, I, I don't even remember my life before the UFC. That's how much uh, I just love watching MMA. It's a different... Hey, me neither. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> me neither. So, so how has life changed? Because like, I remember before the WME merger, you know, it was you and the Fatita brothers, and you kind of had like the, the, this like, triangle of ideas, and then... They went on somewhere else. WME came in. How has, has it, have life gotten much harder since then on you? More pressure? No, it's been great, man. I mean, Ari Emanuel and I have been friends for a long time, like 10 years. Um, and, uh, yeah, we work well together, man. Obviously, if you look at what's going on around here, we've, uh, we've been doing pretty good together. No, yeah, you've been killing it. Uh, you've, been, you've been absolutely <laughs> killing it. By the way, that, that fight last week, that that main event was insane. I mean, how much heart does Whitaker so have? So good. So good. I mean, it, 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 these guys are both so tough, and, and, and uh, yeah, a great fight. I mean, so many guys, I think, you get hit by Yo Romero, you, and it's, it's over. I mean, but that dude, it looked like he was almost out on his feet, but was just all on instinct, kept going. It, it's, it's insane that that, that, that fight. Andy broke his hand in the third round. Whitaker had a broken hand, and you know, fought the entire fight, uh, you know, the rest of the fight with a broken hand against a, a beast like, like Romero. And, and Romero, too. Romero got hit with some big shots and kept coming forward, and, and you know, it was a great fight. Yeah, no. Those it, two match up very well. It was awesome. And then the, uh, the uh, Colby fight was pretty damn cool, too. Uh, uh, Colby Covington versus RDA. I think, you know, he just laid the groundwork on how to beat a guy like RDA, which is just nonstop grinding, nonstop wrestling. Um, now, I, I I talked to Colby. He says he wants to fight Woodley in MSG in in uh, November. Is that what you think yep. is gonna ha- is that what you think is gonna happen? I have no idea what's gonna happen with that fight yet. I don't I don't know. Um, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, it's gonna be awesome because like those. I mean, they had, supposedly they they like trained before, and Colby said he made Woodley quit in practice, and Woodley says that never happened. Uh, and it's just, it's just, it's just crazy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's so many good fights. Uh, the uh, the uh, Stipe Cormier fight is gonna be. That's the one I'm looking forward to the most because I, I just can't. Keep, I just keep going back and forth with it. That whole card is sick. That 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 it's, it's International Fight Week, and uh, the whole card is sick. That that's gonna be a fun weekend. Fun week. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, I got I got shows all, all week. By the way, at the uh, Stratosphere, if you want to come, I know, I know you came to my show a couple years ago. It was awesome having you there. Um, so, uh, Zufa Boxing, is it? How far along are we with Zufa Boxing? Well, 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 let me say this first. Yeah, it was it was great, great going to your show too. You were hilarious. Oh, you thank you. It that night. Thank you, brother. I, I, I tell the story all the time where uh, <laughs> you were telling some kind of. Some kind of uh, some kind of raunchy joke or something. You had some raunchy joke, and these two old people that were in there—I don't even know if you remember this—but these two old people get up and start walking out. And uh, he said, "Hey," we just said something like, "Where, where are you guys going?" The guy yells out, "You suck!" <laughs> and uh, the old guy yells out, "You suck!" And you go, "Oh, mom and dad, I'll see you guys." <laughs> <laughs> it was so your, your timing was incredible it was fucking yeah, hilarious that's, I think about that all the time <laughs> it was so goddamn funny it's exactly what happened and I remember doing comedy with you at the Laugh Factory uh, and I'd never seen you nervous before and you were sweating oh, I, no that, that wasn't nervous that was beyond fucking nervous that, that was like a next level of nervous. I don't know if I've ever been that nervous in my life. No, I was. Try- I literally never want to try that ever again. <laughs> it was uh, that's some crazy shit, man. Having to get listen, I don't give a shit about getting up and speaking in front of people, but getting up and making people laugh. You know, lots of different people think uh, different things are funny than other people, and it's 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 a very hard thing to do. No, um, yeah, because you know, I, I was trying to, to console you. Yeah, fucking brutal. I was trying to console you. You were like, "Can you give me a minute, please?" I was like, "Holy shit!" Like you were, I've never yeah, seen. Yeah, I didn't want anybody talking to me. <laughs> I didn't want anybody near me. You know, normally we, when we when we're shooting, looking for a fight, we're having a blast. 
we're hanging out and, and whatever. I don't give a shit. Man, I was I was next level, next level. It was the greatest thing when I was done with it and get that off my fucking back, man. <laughs> but that's what we do. I'm looking for a fight. We do shit that makes us uncomfortable. We do shit that that uh, we necessarily wouldn't do, and you know, normally. Well, you you did it, and you 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 killed. You had, you had, you had a great set, but. I mean, how nervous were you when you had to speak at the Republican National Convention? Was it the same thing? Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Not even at all. I, I was hanging out in the back. We had a blast. It was, it was a good time. When it was my turn to speak, I went out there, spoke, and then I went home. It was, it was a piece of cake. Wow. Doing stand-up comedy is was the, was the fucking <laughs> worst fucking feeling I've ever had in my life. It, it, it was brutal. Wow, that's that's insane. Because I, I would that's that's crazy to me that you that let the RNC. Now, I mean, did you ever think of yourself back in the day though, like when you were eighteen, nineteen, working at the gym, that you'd be talking at the Republican National Convention? No, <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> I mean, that that's I mean that that must have been that must have been insane. So Zufa boxing, there was a rumor going around that you offered. Uh, not Wilder, uh, Anthony Joshua, five hundred million dollars to sign with Zufa right. Boxing. Is that was that true? It's not true. Uh, uh, me, 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 and Joshua spoke on the phone. Um, we we never got together. We never did any of that shit. He's under contract with with Eddie Hearn, and um, you know his contract was coming up. And I said, listen, I, I I'd, I'd like to talk to you guys. And he made it very clear to me. That that you know he he wasn't going to leave Eddie. He wanted to stay with Eddie. And I said, Yeah, well, I'm not looking for you to leave Eddie. I th I think we can all work together, and um, you know I I think we can do a lot for you here in the United States. So I, I think we we get together and figure out how to work as a team. Then, I, you know I I think Eddie Hearn. You know Eddie Hearn hasn't been in the business that long. I, I think Eddie Hearn was very oversensitive about. You know, the, the, the thought that, you know, Anthony Joshua and I would even talk, you know what I mean? And uh, took it very, uh, I don't know, was almost insulted by it, you know? And, and, and that really wasn't the, the, the conversation we had or, or the intent. Okay, so he goes out or someone goes out and, like, and like spreads that rumor that it's... Yeah, know. whoever started, that's absolutely not true. Got but listen, if, if you're Anthony Joshua... You know, they, they know that we have money. They know that, you know, what we're capable of doing. And, um, you know, not a bad thing for Anthony Joshua for it to be in all the newspapers and all over the Internet that I made a $500 million offer. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. And, and then, and like, your background also is in boxing, so it's not like you, you know, just coming in out of, like, nowhere. I mean, you started, right, as a boxing, yep. as a boxing coach. Now... Yep. A, there was another rumor going around this week that you're really trying to make Brock Lesnar versus John Jones happen. Yeah, that's a, that's that rumor's not true. First of all, <laughs> yes, the, the, I know they both want to fight, and I would make that fight. But first of all, John's still in trouble, and second of all, Brock Lesnar isn't even in these. If you're in the uh, Usada pool, it, it takes six months um, before you can fight again. So that that that's a rumor. It's not true. Okay, got it. Well, I'm happy you're clearing this up. Now, how hard is it for you, Dana? Because I know you know you're you're a great promoter, but you're also you're you're a lot more than that. You know, you're kind of in a lot of ways you're kind of a babysitter. And how hard is it for you sometimes to have to take a step back? Like for example, like with the Conor McGregor bus incident, right? You you, you get in the Madison Square Garden, yeah. biggest fight ever, everything's gonna happen, and next thing I know, this amazing superstar athlete goes crazy, starts tossing dollies at buses. I mean, what, what goes through your head when that happens? Yeah, that, that was a bad day. That was a very bad day. <laughs> you know, we have a lot of bad days around here where bad shit happens, but that was, uh, that was right up there with, with the worst. Now, do you, do you call Connor and you're like, what the fuck are you doing? Or do you have to kind of just let everyone else take it? Take it and yeah, no. So we... Uh, yeah, I, I get, you know, I did, the, I did the interview with the media. I came back to the arena. I had just left the arena. I was literally half a block down the street when Reed Harris called me, freaking out that 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 Connor was attacking the bus. So so, um, you know, I didn't understand exactly 
what was going on or what had happened, and I knew it was over. So I went to the hotel and waited for the fighters to come back from the hotel, but they had to stay there because the police were called. Uh. So the police were coming. So I had to, then I left the hotel and drove back to the arena, um, and that's when the press was still there, and I, I talked to the press, and you know, and Connor and I didn't talk until uh, I think until Connor had gotten out of jail. I think that's the first time we we talked. Now, is it like talking? Yeah. I mean, is it talking to you like your like your son, your child? Or are you saying, "Hey, listen, Betty, you got the whole world ahead of you. You know, come on, man. Like, what are you doing?" No, I mean, Connor is a guy that you know. You know, I've obviously been behind since day one. He, he's a, he's a kid that I have tremendous respect for as as a fighter and, and as a person. And uh, you know, we, we've always had this really good working relationship. But for him to come to one of our events at at the arena and and and, and do what he did was as bad as it gets. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. What you, I mean, I was like, I remember texting you, like, hey, man, sorry you had a wrong, that bad day. You texted back a gun emoji to, like, your head. <laughs> like, fucking, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, man. And then I said, like, even John Jones thinks that McGregor needs to put it together. And, and, like, normally I get, like, an LOL from you, and I got nothing. And I'm like, uh-oh, I, think, yeah. I feel like I'm bombing in my own text messages right now. <laughs> uh, this, this, is, this is not good. This, like, comedy is tragedy plus time. Let's give this some time. So, uh, I, yeah, but that's why it's got to be so hard, because MMA is such a, you, I mean, you attract such a great athlete, but you also attract some people that are just out there. And for you to have to kind of rein them all in, that's got to be brutal. It's got to be brutal. Yeah. No, it's, it's, we got a lot of people under contract here, over 500 fighters under contract. And that doesn't include all the employees I have here, you know? So things are always happening. Somebody, you know, has personal problems or something, you know, every day, every day we deal with this stuff from, you know, on both sides, fighters and employees. Is it ever tempting to just get an, buy an island and be like, you know what, I got the money, I can go get an island, live there happily ever after, and just, is that ever a temptation you have? No, <laughs> never. I, I, the retirement doesn't even, not even close. Um, I love this, you know, this is, this, is, this is what I do, man. And uh, if I do go on vacation, after like four days, I'm chomping at the bit to get back to work, so... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm good. Did you watch the uh, bare knuckle boxing event that went on in Wyoming? I did not. Was it was good. It was brutal. It was good, but uh, like, Rowdy Beck kicked some ass. She she did really good. And then uh Who did? Rowdy Beck. Rowdy Beck did really good. Uh th I th I think she found her calling in life. Uh it's brutal. It's Really? Yeah, it's brutal. I mean, it's they have bare knuckles. And Joey Beltran fought. Uh, that was a really good fight against Tony Diaz. I think they're onto something. It's only legal in Wyoming. But it's, it's very entertaining. And a lot of MMA guys are going over to it. So Interesting. I, I don't know. Uh, it's, de it's definitely, in, definitely in, in, insane. Now, I got to ask you, Ben Askren, right? I'm, a, I'm obviously a big wrestling fan. I'm a huge fan of Ben Askren, 17-0, two-time national champion. He says he, he went over to you guys. You said win some fights in the WSOF, and then we'll, we'll put you in, like, the UFC. Is, is that what happened? I don't even remember. To be honest with you, I don't even remember. But now, is that a guy, though? That, that, is, is, is that a guy that, that you would still let allow to come back and like and uh compete in the ufc he's under contract he's uh, under contract with one fc he can't go anywhere and do anything right 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 because there's a guy that i i would love to see how he would match up against some of the best 170 pounders you know Cause, yeah yeah because he definitely but he uh yeah he can't he's 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 under he's under contract with those guys so because he's such a he's such a good wrestler but uh but yeah, that, that that makes sense. Now, Khabib versus Connor in Russia, is that was? Are we close? No, that's not happening in Russia. Ah, why not? Yeah, that's not happening in Russia. Because that's going to happen in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be awesome. That that that's the fight that I can't wait to see. I just it's a tough fight because if Khabib if it goes past three rounds, I got to give it to Khabib. 
But Connor has that. Are you, that, are you, are you, are you going to fly to Russia to see that fight and buy a ticket? 100, if you get me front row tickets, it'll be me and Yakov Smirnov. <laughs> uh, I will 100% go to Russia. Are you cra- Absolutely. Are you, are you crazy? 100%. Uh, that is, there's so many fights I want to see. Uh, uh, Nate D, I mean, personally, I, I'll, here's my like, dream. I, I want Nate Diaz to come back. He's, he's one of my favorites. Uh, I don't know why he's not still fighting. I, don't, I mean, that's all, obviously all on Nate Diaz. I can't wait to see, obviously, Woodley versus uh, Colby. And I, you know, I want to see what happens with, uh, with uh, Stipe. But you're right. That, that, that whole card, top to bottom, of UFC 226 is uh, insane. It's absolutely insane. Who do you want to see Nate Diaz fight? Uh, who do I want to see? I want to see Nate Diaz fight at one se- Ben Askren, if you can get him on. Account. No, uh, what? Fucking <laughs> Nate Diaz, I want to see him fight. Kevin Lee. Where, Na- Nate hey, where are you going to fly to see that one? Fantasy <laughs> Island? <laughs> one, yeah, exactly. Fantasy Island. Uh, me and Nick the Tooth. And, uh, so, no, I want to see Nate Diaz, I wanna see Nate Diaz fight uh, Kevin Lee. I think that would be a good fight. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I agree with you. Yeah. And, yes, I agree with you on the seven, too. You got Miochik Cormier. You got Holloway Ortega. Uh, Francis Ngannou versus Derek Lewis. Yeah. Chiesa, Chiesa versus Pettis, the fight that was supposed to happen in New York. Saki versus Roundtree, which oh. would be a fucking insane. And uh, this, this, we call this kid Baby Vitor, but uh, Costa. Costa versus uh, Uriah Hall. Oh, yeah. Um, Yancey Medeiros versus Mike Perry. Oh, that's... Yeah, that's going to be insane. I, I love Yancey. He's uh, such a nice guy, but he, d- he doesn't necessarily... We got Asuncio versus Font. Yep. Also a great fight. Also a great fight. Awesome. Uh, now, what do you think about De La Hoya signing Chuck to fight Tito? <laughs> um, yeah, hey. Those guys want to fight. Listen, I, I, I pray, pray that Chuck doesn't fight again. I, I hope that doesn't happen, but um, yeah. Listen, if, if they, whatever, whoever he signs with, if those guys fight, I just hope that, that Chuck makes a, a shitload of money, man. I, I, just, I, just, I just hope he never fights again, man. And uh, I would hope that the people close to him would think like I do, too. Yeah, I mean, you, you were his, his first manager, right? Yeah. Now, uh, now, I don't know if I was his first manager, but I was... I was his manager. Now, Phil Baroni keeps telling us that he knocked down Chuck in sparring, and you were there. Uh, That's not true. He, did, he didn't knock Chuck down. <laughs> he didn't knock Chuck down. Phil, Phil sparred with Chuck. There's, it's on the internet. Yeah. You, you can go on the internet and watch it. But he says, okay, so, but Phil says that he should sign with Zufa Boxing. You guys would give him a chance, right? Baroni? Baroni? Yeah. And I, I have a long history and a, a relationship with Baroni. And, uh, you know, the, 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 as, as crazy as Baroni is, you know what I mean, what a madman he is, I've actually had a good working relationship with, with Phil. We've had a couple of, uh, a couple of moments, but uh, other than that, I've had, but, but I, think, I think Phil is somebody who should retire too. Yeah, yeah. No, he, 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 he fought two weeks ago. He uh, won in 10 seconds. In King of the Cage. Did he really? Yeah, he fought King I of the Cage. I didn't know that. Yeah, in, in, in uh, San Diego. He won in 10 seconds in, uh, in King That's of the him. Cage. Maybe I'm wrong then. Maybe Phil should be <laughs> fighting. <laughs> now, who's the, now, who's the guy that, you'd like, uh, that uh, surprised you? A guy that you were like, man, I don't really see it. And then three years later, the guy was a world beater. Who, who was one of your biggest surprises? One of my biggest surprises. I don't know if there's ever really been a big surprise. I mean, if there was there was a, there was a guy that we we saw that looked talented and they made it all the way, I we, you know we we kind of expected. But off the top of my head, I, I can't really think of anybody who blew me away and I was like, oh wow, we didn't see that coming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a guy, well, a guy like like Clay Guida or something who would like you're like, oh okay, he's good, but then all of a sudden he just achieves. You know, he, he like beats guys that you didn't think he was going to beat on paper. Uh, what, what, are the, what are the funniest? Oh, that, that, that happens all the time. I mean, th- th- there's guys that fight that, that you think will never be beaten. You know, they end up getting beat. It's just when you've been in this sport long enough, th- there's no surprises. I mean, anything is possible in this sport. 
Yeah, that's what makes such a great sport. One, one of my favorite um, stories you told me, uh, we could edit this out, by the way, if you want to tell us, was, was, was when you went to court because two guys masturbated on the Ultimate Fighter and like someone's sushi, and then you had to tell the judge, yeah. you had to tell the judge that, that, like, that, that, that it wasn't real jizz or something? No, it, was, it, it wasn't in court. We had to go before the, uh, the, the Nevada State Athletic Commission. But what? I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think we went in there and said it wasn't real. We just went in there and took our, uh, took our whooping and said it would never happen again. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you guys were saying that it was like, oh, what, it was actually glue or something, or it wasn't actually, no. No, I, I, I don't think it was glue. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Got it. Now, have you, have you thought about producing comedy specials? And if so, can you produce mine? And it will air it on Fight Pass. Uh, has that ever? Yeah, we, 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 did, we did one of Joe Rogan's specials. Oh, nice. We might have done a couple of Joe Rogan specials, yeah. Oh. Yeah, we produced comedy before. Well, let's do it. I'm in. What's the submission process? You ready? I, I'm ready. I've been doing this 21 fucking years. I, yes, of course I'm ready. <laughs> Come on, man. Put me in. I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm totally ready. You produce it. Let's do it. It'll, it'll be uh, Dana White produces the Adam Hunter comedy special. I'm in. Are you in? We'll talk about it. Oh, that would be, that'll, that'll, that'll we'll be amazing. Also, I got, a, I got a baby coming in five weeks. I got a baby girl coming. Any advice on parenting? You, yeah, well, my advice is you better start pumping out uh, comedy specials. <laughs> 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 Babies aren't cheap. <laughs> That's true. Uh, how, many, how many kids do you have? I have three. I have two boys and a girl. All right, so being a parent to a girl, help me. What are things I should look out for? Give me some good advice. No, it's the best. So in the beginning, they're all about mommy, 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 and, and you know you, you feel like the outsider. But then as they get older, it turns into it's all about daddy, and it's, it's the fucking best. And it just gets better and better every year. Nice. Nice. How old are your kids now? So my oldest son just turned 17. We just had his birthday last weekend. My younger son turned 16 in July, and my daughter is 12. Wow. Now, how do they deal with you traveling all the time? They're used to it. It's, it's, that's, it's been that way their whole life. They're totally used to it. They're used to the whole lifestyle. My kids have really, really adapted well to, to my life and, you know, all that stuff. It's, they're very, very cool. Well, didn't like one time they wanted to have like a white Christmas, so you had snow flown in from like Alaska or something? They, they, no, they didn't, they didn't want to have a white Christmas. They... they you know, they didn't get, to, I, I grew up back in Boston when I was younger and they, they I, you know, you got to experience snow and sledding and all that shit. So yeah, I, I had, I had um, snow brought in and built a huge mound that they could sled on. I do all kinds of crazy shits for my kids. You see the fucking birthday parties I've been throwing for my kids since they were babies and, and the uh, fucking birthday parties, um, you know, trips we take them on, you know, cool things that they get to do. Always. Yeah, no, one of the coolest things also, I, like I went to high school in, um, in Maine. I went to uh, a boarding school called the Hyde School in Bath, Maine. You're from Maine, and you told me that you, you grew up pretty poor, so when you got rich, you actually bought the whole block for your family? No, no, no. So my grandmother lived, my grandparents lived up there, and I got a bunch of cousins and stuff. And uh, my grandmother lived in a trailer on a piece of property that she paid rent on. And um, I, went, I bought the whole street. I didn't buy the block. I bought the whole street, literally the whole street. That I mean, they must have loved it. I mean, they must have been in heaven. Yeah, it's where it's where we go all the time, and and I felt this crazy, you know, fun place with all the toys up there, and uh, we go there, every, you know, as many as much as we can until it snows. I don't go near <laughs> that place when it snows, but um, until it snows, we we go up there. I'm I'm going there for the Fourth of July again, and. I was just there a few weeks ago, and I'll go as many times as I can th th this uh, this summer. That's awesome. That's awesome. I got I got to ask you. Uh, so I was a big Kevin Randleman fan. I'm a, I'm a big Jens Pulver fan. Uh, I think both those guys should be in the Hall of Fame. No. No, I agree. Yeah, they should, and they will be someday. Oh, uh, that'll be awesome. Good, good, good. Yeah, those guys are. You know, I, I just. Uh, my favorite people to, uh, to interview are always the old timers. Like we had, we had, we had Don Fry on uh, earlier, 
and just he's awesome. Those guys are my favorite because those guys fought yeah. just for honor. You know, it wasn't about the money. It wasn't about the, nope. the, the sex or this or that. It was just because they were tough and they wanted to prove it. And those are always my favorite guys. I had uh, Mark Kerr on the podcast recently, and that was pretty awesome they had too. To fight friggin' ten times a night <laughs> to win fifty grand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One of my favorite stories is Gary Goodridge told me he went to Brazil. They told him no rules. You go to a fight, no rules. And then he gets there. They're like, oh, we have there's a couple rules. Uh, he was really angry about that. So during the fight, he removed the guy's cup, grabbed his balls, and squeezed as hard as he could, and the guy tapped. And he's like, and then everyone started got really mad at him, started throwing shit at him. But he's like, you said no rules, like. Those are the, like That's some, crazy. some of the craziest stories I've ever. And then Hensel, hey, fuck, hey, you really gotta want to win to grab another guy's ball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck. I would. I mean, hell, no rules, no rules. Fuck it. And then Henzo. I'm always looking for guys with that killer instinct, man. You got it. <laughs> yeah. And then Henzo, Henzo Gracie is another guy who uh, told me he was one time in a fight, and it was in Brazil, and his back was against the cage, and he got stabbed during the fight from somebody that came and he continued to fight and won the fight after getting stabbed in the middle of a fight. I mean, those guys. That's he- fucking great. Now listen, listen, man, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I've, I've spent some time with him and uh, in Abu Dhabi, you know, it, 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 Sheikh Mohammed and Sheikh Taknoon are, 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 were investors in the UFC. And uh, me and Lorenzo would go out there uh, and Frank and, and, and spend time with these guys, the best, the incredible guys, these guys. Spend time with them. And uh, they always have their friends around. And he, and he is very, very good friends with Henzo Gracie. Very good friends. So pretty much every time I went out there, Henzo would be there. And the stories that <laughs> Tak Noon would tell about, about um, Henzo too, some crazy horse race. Ask him about the horse race. <laughs> That that Tak Noon got him in, in in Abu Dhabi. It's crazy, but basically, you know, Sheikh Tak Noon was telling me that he's one of the toughest guys he's ever met in his life. No, w- weren't you worried that one time in UFC Abu Dhabi when it was Anderson Silva versus Maya? I think the main event, right? And everyone was booing. Were you guys worried for your lives? Like, like this is this is going to be really bad? No, it's it's not like that. It's not like that over there. That's all. That's all American bullshit. It's 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 awesome over there. No, I mean, you, you ask Kenzo Gracie. That guy's over there every weekend. Yeah, you know he ain't over there because it sucks. He's over there because it's awesome. He was telling um, me that. Those so- are, yeah, the, the way those people treat you when you're over there is phenomenal. He he was telling me he was at a concert with his daughter, and some guy kept trying to buy beers for his daughter who was like 15. And he was like, leave me alone. The guy's like, shut up, old man. So he waited for the guy in the bathroom at the concert, choked him out, and put his head in the in the uh, toilet. So. <laughs> Yeah, no, he don't play, man. He's, he's, you know, he's getting older now. But uh, when he when he was young, he was uh, he was a wild man. When was the last time you got into an actual fight? Oh Jesus! I think the last time it never it didn't it didn't get into an actual fist fight. But my last like altercation was at the Wiggles. <laughs> the, wait, the concert, the, the Wiggles concert? Yeah, yeah, the Wiggles concert <laughs> with my kids. Yeah. <laughs> when they were little, I think that's the last time that I actually. Wait, uh, wait, can we, we, we we have to go back a little bit. Why did you get into a fight at the Wiggles concert? <laughs> because this, uh, so me and my wife and my kids were in the second row, and some assholes in the first row, right? So at the Wiggles, when 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 they start singing, all the kids go up in front of the stage, and they can you know stand on the stage. They're all dancing and jumping around and shit. So my kids are up there. So my wife, who is Italian and fucking crazy about the kids. They can't go two feet by themselves. She goes up and she's sitting there. But there were other parents up in the front too. And this guy, I'm sitting there in my seats and I'm looking. I'm like, is that fucking guy yelling at my wife? I think that guy is yelling at my wife. So I walk over there and I go, what's going on? And and, and my wife says, he, he's saying, go sit in your seats. Like we're in the fucking eighth row. He fuck face. We're, we're in the second row. We're right behind you. You know what I mean? So then I, I get fucking pissed and I start getting into it with this guy. And guess what this, 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 this guy does? What? What do you think this guy does it works when for, I start getting aggressive with him? Works for Bellator? No, I, I, he runs and gets security. Oh, come on. 
Really? So wait a minute. You were just here getting in my wife's face like a fucking tough guy. Yeah. I come walking over here and you, and you fucking run to security? Ah. Yeah. That's come the on. last real, like, holy shit, my husband's going to get in a fight incident that I had. Man, I'm fucking, I'm, I'm 48 years old. I fight to get on a treadmill. I ain't going to fight anybody. Yeah, but don't you have a boxing guy every day at, at noon that coaches you guys? Cause... Yeah, we work out. I just, I just, when we built this new building, um, I built a gym here. Yeah, I got a badass little gym here. I work out every day. My friends come in. We work out together. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. But when you were going to fight Tito Ortiz, you, you actually weighed in, right? I mean, you were ready to fight him. Yeah, you know, we were going to fight, yeah. <laughs> That would have been He's awesome. He's the one that did it. He put it in the contract. He said when he signed the new contract, uh, him and Lorenzo did the deal because he and I couldn't even be in the same room together. So him and Lorenzo did the deal, and Lorenzo called me and said he's putting. he wants to put in the uh, contract that he'll sign it if, if you'll box him in a three-round boxing match. I go, fuck yes, done. Sign it. <laughs> And then I think Jenna told him this is probably not a good idea, right? You have nothing to win out of this? I don't know who told him. Listen, they, they, they were calling and they said, uh, and they were talking to Craig Borsari. Yes. The head of production here said, uh, we want to go. It's like Craig was my manager. <laughs> he says, well, uh, we, we want to go no headgear, headgear. I said, no problem, no headgear. We want to use eight ounce gloves. No problem, we can use eight ounce gloves. They kept throwing all these things at me like I was going to say no or something or say it's not happening. I agreed to everything they wanted. Wow. And then, right, as, you know, we did the whole thing with Spike leading up to the fight. And then, like, four days before it was supposed to happen, Tito called and left a voicemail on my phone and said, I'm going to let you off the hook on this. Oh, come on. That's, yeah, that's how it went down. Wow. I, 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 and, you, and you were sparring with like real heavyweight fighters, right? Like ranked guys. Oh, I had fucking, I, I like the number 12 guy in the world in here sparring with me. And how were you doing you against know, him? I was sparring, listen to me. I, you know, when that happened, I was 30 fucking seven years old, 37. I got these 24 and 25 year old bad motherfuckers coming every day and just beating the shit out of me. We were sparring like every day. I got in the fucking best shape I've been in ever for that for that thing and um and i remember every day sparring was at four o'clock and i'd be in my office and i'd be like oh my god it's fucking two o'clock those guys are gonna be here in two hours oh my god they're gonna be here in 30 minutes. And, and then i'd go down and, and, and spar with these guys <sighs> that sucks because i mean you, you got beat up for no reason for like <laughs> months. yeah i did <laughs> yes i did <laughs> now now cm punk are we gonna give him a third chance what do you think no. Yeah. I, I, no, I, I know. Don't think, I, I, don't, I don't think he really wants third chance. Uh, you know, hopefully after this last fight, you know, the, the guy has, he's got balls, man, and he's got guts. And <clears throat> he went on the world stage, and, and, and he gave it two shots, man. A lot of people want to talk shit about CM Punk. Get in there. Yeah. C come on over. Fight, yeah. Fight. Fight one of these guys. It's easy to sit in your fucking living room and talk shit. Come in here. This guy actually was a huge star at WWE. Came over here and put it all on the line twice, man, in front of the whole world. Now, if people can't respect that, then then you're a fucking idiot anyway. No, nothing but respect for him. It, it did get kind of sad though at a, at a certain point where you're like, man, why? You know, why why are you doing this after a while? Like, maybe someone should have told him that was training with him. Hey, but man, we're not we're not you ready. You can't tell somebody though. You can't tell somebody don't do the thing that you want to do the most that 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 cm punk wanted to be a ufc fighter he wanted to come and he wanted to fight here he wanted it so bad that he fucking dropped everything and focused on nothing but mixed martial arts did these unbelievable if you talk to his team you know next time you talk to duke rufus or pettis or any of those guys and th talk about how this guy was driving back and forth from chicago to their place and, and would drive for hours to come out and train, would train forever and would be, the, you know, they, they, they all ended up respecting him, you know? No, 100%. But and, and the guy went in there and put it all on the line. 100%. But I did text one of his coaches the first fight, right, the night before, and I said, how's he going to do tomorrow? And they wrote back, not good. So, right. I mean, that's, 
but at the same time, you're right. You, you don't know much about Mike Jackson is 0-1. You're not putting him up against there against Diego Sanchez or some world beater. You're putting him up against a guy no, who's... Tell me, tell me one guy who can walk into the UFC at 38 years old and compete. Uh, after he's been training for fucking months. <laughs> nobody. I mean, unless you're an, a very elite-level wrestler, elite-level boxer, elite-level kickboxer, maybe. I mean, you're right. It's, it's, it's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Yep. You know, but it, well, I'm saying just a re- he, he wasn't just any of those things. He was just a regular guy. Well, he was also well, a regular guy. WWE guy. I mean, those. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But WWE guys are very athletic. Right. I mean, for the yeah. most part, they're, 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 they're athletic, but it, it ain't the same thing. No. And the only reason that Brock Lesnar did as well as he did, because he was a real wrestler. The guy actually came from collegiate wrestling and he was one of the best. Now, no, the whole thing with John Jones, like. I want to believe him because he's so good to the point where he was beating everybody off stuff. Why would he need to take stuff? Like, he was kicking everyone's butt before, you know, like, it wasn't like he was losing and then started taking steroids and then beating everybody. He was beating everyone off shit. So I have to give him the benefit of the doubt. But then to p- fail something twice, you're just, I mean, that's got to drive you crazy. The whole John Jones thing drives me crazy. I mean, honestly... John Jones, the greatest of all time, the greatest to ever do it. And, and, and the thing that's really frustrating is, is imagine if this guy tried. <laughs> imagine if he tried even a little bit. How incredibly amazing this guy could have been. I mean, it, it's just, he, he, he could have been the biggest star ever. God knows what he would have you know, finished accomplishing in the light heavyweight, then in the heavyweight division, maybe he'd have, you know, had a, had a title defense at heavyweight that would never be broken. And the, the endorsements and the fucking, I mean, everything that that guy could have been is unbelievable. Yeah, 100%. Now, what advice would you give to some of these guys? Like, all right, say a guy like Colby Covington was really not making that much noise. He was winning. He was a good fighter. Then he takes this whole kind of Republican, Trump, you know, angle, and it starts going, I'm going to the White House. People start to hate him, and become a vi- he becomes a villain, but at least they're talking about him. Now, is that something that you would endorse, or do you think that that's sort of playing a WWE character, or are you like, hey, at least people are talking about you? What's, what's your I, I thought don't, on that? I don't endorse anything. I don't ever tell guys how to act or what to say or any of that stuff. It's, you know, you are who you are. You know, some, some guys, you have a guy like, you know, um, I don't know, a, a good example, I guess, would be, uh, oh, let me think. Like a Rick Story or Stephen something? Stephen Thompson. Stephen Thompson, okay. Wonderboy Thompson. Wonderboy Thompson doesn't talk trash about anybody. You know, he goes in, he's a good-looking kid, clean cut, you know, uh, and, and does his thing. Then you got guys that are like Conor McGregor, you know, that uh, are loud and get in your face and, and, and all this stuff whoever you are you are and it's my job to promote you I, I don't tell anybody to do anything and I wouldn't I would never um, suggest to somebody they be somebody that they're not you, you know to go out and <clears throat> to be Colby Covington you really got to be a little bit of that you know what I mean it takes a certain type of person that doesn't give a shit if he goes out and gets booed everywhere he goes you actually uh, you actually create the booze you, 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 you make it happen when you walk out do you ever tell guys to tone it down? He went to Chicago and got on the mic and said, Chicago sucks, your pizza <laughs> sucks. Uh, you know, all this stuff about Chicago sucks. <laughs> and of course, you know, I mean, when, when, you, when you got a whole play, you know, the whole arena in Chicago chanting, Colby sucks, Colby sucks during the fight, you know? No, but do you ever tell guys... being a bad guy. Do you ever tell guys to calm down at all with that or, or No. No, not not unless you like um, like a Miguel throwing dollies through bus windows or something. <laughs> I mean, unless you start doing something, you know, outrageous. No, we, we don't. Or you know, if it starts to get physical in any way and things like that, that that's shit we don't like because the the, the athletic commission can come in and uh, and make life very very difficult for everybody. Right. Right, right, right. Now, where do you see the UFC in five years from now? We're going into all these different countries and uh, that we've never been, going into new states that we've never been. You know, I'm going to continue this, this movement 
to, to grow the sport, you know, throughout the world. And uh, wait till you see, I mean, in five years, we'll be done with our ESPN deal. And you can imagine how big UFC will be in five years. I, I can't wait. I mean, I'm telling you, I, you know, I, I still coach middle school wrestling. I've been doing it 12 years. And I see it firsthand how that has grown. It used to be, we used to get 10 kids, 15 kids. Now we got 40 kids, 45 kids. And it's all because of, the, of MMA and the UFC. They all look up to it. Like when I wrestled in college, I, I didn't see anywhere to go. I'm not going to make the Olympics. What am I doing? Now you got all these college wrestlers coming out and becoming mixed martial arts starts. And it's, it's, it's great. You, you've developed a professional league for people. And, and when women, I mean, I got all these girl wrestlers too. They look at, they, oh, I want to be the next Ronda Rousey or they want to be the next Holly Holm or they want to be the next, you know, Rose Nama Yunus. It's, it's amazing. It's really, really cool, man. It's true. It's, thank it's, you. Uh, no, no, thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you for doing the podcast. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you uh, first week of July. Uh, awesome, buddy. UFC Congrats Friday. on your baby and everything else. And uh, I'll see you soon. Dana, thank you, man. Take care. All right, buddy. Bye. Bye. All right. That was Dana White. Nice.